Hi guys, hope you're all well. Uh, today it's a bit of a quick one. <clears throat> You've probably seen from the photo previous. Um, and I'd had a bit of, I've had a request for it twice now. Um, and I'd, I've only just got around to doing a bit of research um, about uh, dragon vein or dragon scale agate. And I didn't realise, but it's actually a four stone, isn't it? So we're making a four, four stone today. Um, and I know that Sam over at Jessima Tutorials does um, one where she lays a veneer over for the crackle, which is really cool. Um, if you, you know, fancy doing something a bit more involved, maybe go and watch Sam's video. But for this one today, we're just going to keep it really simple. Uh, so we're just going to have um, an agate that's, um, you know, uh, there's no banding in it or anything. It's just a mix of two colours, as we've done with lots of my chopping videos. Um, yeah, like I said, I did some research and realised that they just got agate and superheated it till it crackled. And then they dye the crackles. Um, so I just thought, well, agate comes in all shapes and forms and the dragon vein agate comes in all different colours and things some of them are, are dyed some of them are a bit more natural with a crackled dye so I just thought we'd do a, a plainer one and you can you know then go with the flow and, and do what you wish with it so all we're going to need is some cernic translucent and I'm going to do an amber coloured agate stone uh, of course um, I've got cernic translucent in amber you could use some alcohol ink I recommend the honeycomb color in this is very amber like and that's all we're going to need except for some black um, alcohol ink and maybe um, a little bit of straight up alcohol but that's all we're going to need guys so all i'm going to do this is just um a, the end of a pack that i've had so i'm just going to get two bits of it i'm not making a great deal of this guys as you know um for my samples i don't like to make a huge lump so in fact that's probably too much because i'm only going to make a couple of pendants i'll use the bigger piece let me get my blade and I'm just going to cut this piece oh got a bit of something on my blade cut this piece in half and I'm going to keep the smaller half translucent and I'm literally going to add um, a small pea like that size just a small P to that piece uh, and I'm going to go and get these thoroughly mixed and conditioned and then we're going to put them together and marble them a little bit before we chop it all up um, so I'll go and get these ready uh, and then I'll come back and explain the marbling bit in a sec see you in a min okay guys I've got my um, yellow and my translucent conditioned and all we're going to do guys is we're just going to put our pieces together it doesn't matter how you do it just put them together again um, just be mindful about trapping her when you're doing this um, give it a, still give it a little stretch and things um, as you're passing it through and what we're going to do is just get this to loosely blend it doesn't matter um, if there's lines or anything it's just to add a little bit of interest to our piece so we've got a couple of different colors uh, running through it so I'll just go and do this and all I'm going to do is just pass it through fold it pass it through maybe fold it a different way just to get a loose mix of these two colors um, you can just do one color guys I just thought this would um, you know stop it looking flat let it have a couple of different bits of colouring uh, so I'll go and do mine I'll see you in a sec 
Okay guys, I've probably passed mine through three times. So you can see I've got some darker bits, some streaks of light in there. I'll show you the other side. I literally just put it through three different ways uh, just to get it to blend a little bit. And now all we're going to do is just chop this up as we normally would. Uh, I have actually got a bit more than I expected to be using guys so I'm just going to do a stack of four just try and make sure I've not got any air trapped uh, if it's a bit sticky guys uh, you know if you've got really fresh clay um, just let it rest a minute because uh, of course we're not you could use a bit of micro I suppose if you've got some very dark or black I've actually got some somewhere uh, you could use a bit of mica to keep things separated if you so wished but I'm just going to do it by hand as a chop now I've noticed with the crackling on some of the pieces I've been looking at online that um, the, it's not very uh, angular um, like we've done in previous pieces it's um, the crackles seem to be a bit more rounded if that makes sense so I'm just going to take these down still have a few smaller pieces and larger pieces um, but I'm going to take I'm not going to really chop into this like I would do normally I'm just keeping my eye on the size and the shape of the pieces. It looks like cheese. <laughs> let's cut that one. Right, let's get these separated. Yeah, and with the bigger pieces, you don't have to be too careful. And now I'm just going to go through these again keeping my eye on how big each piece is like I say again different pieces look different the pieces I've looked at uh, they weren't too angular and I'm just going to roll to get rid of any sharp pieces so the pieces aren't you know too jagged let's just split these up and it's funny because some of the pieces I've seen are quite large uh, cracks and some are quite small um, I suppose it depends on the, the you know the initial agate doesn't it so I'm just breaking some of these pieces up a little bit I'm just gently rounding them with my finger so I've got you know a mix of small and large but not too large I think that will probably work nicely oh bit of cat fluff I'll just get these little pieces here to round off a bit and I'm just wanting them to keep reasonably separate while we're working with them I'm just going to make a hole in the middle because that's where I'm going to drop my um, alcohol ink ok now this will get messy guys stick some gloves on if you so wish you know I'm not too fussed about wearing gloves you know my hands will clean up uh, quite well with a bit of alcohol and my nails are already shot so I'm not worried <laughs> about them right okay I think that'll do let me just move them pieces okay so I'm going to put one two three drops is plenty I'm going to add some alcohol to that and I'm just going to lightly spritz the rest of my pieces and then we're going to get this mixed in I 
had another drop of alcohol because compared to my test piece this looks quite grey I probably put a little bit too much alcohol on didn't I but okay just make a hole guys I'm just going to put one more drop in the middle just to darken it a little bit and one spritz of alcohol ink and let's just get that a bit darker that's better you just want to make sure it's had a really good mix in okay I think my pieces are great I'm just gonna pop them to one side and spread them out a little bit to air off there we go nicely spread out we'll let them air off I'll go and clean my hands and I'll see you in a sec if I've got a clean finger to stop my camera see you in a minute okay guys this is aired off for a bit now uh, I did leave it actually about 10 minutes because um, it was a bit tacky with the alcohol spray I'd used and we're just going to get this to come together now um, in the four purple agate I did the amethyst um, I was saying you know be mindful about over squishing because you don't want to lose your matrix doesn't really matter too much with this one don't overdo it because you still want you know the, that shape uh, but you can be a little bit more heavy-handed in getting this one together so I'm just going around and squeezing I feel like I'm making sushi when I do this just going around and squeezing firmly to try and get any air out and I'll just do it this way as well go from the top and the bottom and there we've got a nice block of our clay nicely put together now as always I'm going to give this a wipe over with a wet wipe and some alcohol because I don't like all this on the outside um, I just think it saves trying to sand it off or get it off later and you don't have to get it all off guys just get the majority off so that you can you know start to see your clay through the other side and it just saves that bit of work later doesn't it this two minutes of a job I don't know if anybody's um, noticed but um, this piñata alcohol ink compared to the ranger one it's miles easier to clean up and get off your hands must be something to do with the pigments inside mustn't it you know that they must use a different pigment and so it doesn't stain your hands um, well I've noticed it with the black and the white more than the um, colours it could just be that the pigments that they use in these are more of a solid um, so it doesn't dye your skin like other pigments might do there we go get in there now sorry guys it's just one of my bugbears um, having that horrible black band around it that you then got to sand off at a later date I'll just give it one more quick go over just to make sure the majority is off and you can already see now the um, crackle that's showing up now if you let this sit especially with the black it soaks into the clay a little bit 
so you get a bit of a thicker band. I think this would be interesting to do with um, different colours. Um, you know, you can get purples and pinks and um, translucent agates with um, like an orangey vein through. I just thought I'd do the black because it's the most dramatic, isn't it? Okay, <clears throat> that's that bit done. Let's find a nice face. Um, I'm just going to cut through this, guys. There we go. So look at that crackle, it's lovely, isn't it? And do you get what I mean now about just rounding those edges off? Uh, makes it look less um, less fractured just by rolling the clay a little bit it rounds the corners off a little bit uh, so let's use a mould and I'll do one in a cutter as well I'll just give this mould a wipe because it seems to have attracted Doris fluff as usual there we go I think I'll do this shape here so I'm just going to elongate this a bit and then I'll get my 6mm lolly sticks out and my roller and I'll just give this a little roll that way first and then I turn it just so that I don't distort my fracture and I think that'll work pretty well in this one. Let's just get it pushed down into there. I've got a bit too much here to be fair guys. Just let me trim a bit off. Now I've got a mark where I know it's going to go. quite a shallow one this I'd forgotten okay let's get that in there give it a roll so that I know it's firmly in get my sharper blade for trimming and let's just get this sliced off Oh, that's handy. I was going to wipe the back off, but the slithers have um, cleaned it for me. There we go. Just push them edges in. And I don't get a ridge. Right, I'll just let that sit a second while I decide what I'm going to do with the next bit. Um, what shall we do? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I do this, don't I? And then I forget what I'm doing. I don't know which cut to use. Oh, maybe I'll just use my little early one again <laughs> I do like this cutter guys or maybe that's a bit big I think I'll just do a little one I'll just do this one and we'll curve it because um, I would imagine the stones aren't too big when you're making this so I'm just going to cut two pieces about the same thickness and I'll butt them together like so I'm just going to squish that up a little bit to help that joint and again rig my little rollers in give it a roll uh, I'll do it that way then I don't 
yeah this one's gonna have to be thinner let's get me 4.5s out just gonna roll over that joint first see if I can get it to blend a bit more just run over it with my nail a little bit to break it up Oops, let's just pick this up. Give it a squish. Oh, sorry guys, I've been all fingers and thumbs, aren't I? Right, let's give this a roll. There we go, that joint's all but disappeared now. this a little burnish just to make sure that surface is super smooth and I may varnish or resin these guys it just adds that bit of dimension we'll see what they look at like when they come out the oven Now, somebody gave me a tip in group the other day um, about using rubber gloves for cutting out um, and I only had black ones so my friend sent me some clear ones to have a go with so I'll just use a piece of this I'd got one out ready and not cut it up sorry guys again little miss unorganized today there we go let's give this a try see how it works doming wise I'll just smooth it down that would have gone that way but never mind let's do this I don't like wasting any Oh, and I'm just going to get my little block to help me push this down. I'll give it a little wiggle to make sure it's gone through. Oh, perfect. That was a great tip, wasn't it? Not one wrinkle around there, which is good. And a beautiful surface as well. Okay. I'll get one of my little silver soaps out. Put off a bit of a mark on that one. Let's rub it off. Okay. Get this picked up. Get it popped on here for a little bit of a shape to it make sure that edge is clean oops something's just fell off my shelf nice clean edge nice surface so that's one piece and we'll get a little bit of paper and pop this one out just loosen it a little bit first out you pop and there's our other piece okay guys I shall go and pop these in the oven and I'll uh, see you when they're baked see you when I'm in hi guys we're out the oven of course they need sanding guys so they don't look very translucent at the minute the surface is really nice on those two with the scraps I just made this little dropper with a bead that will sit above it and two little dropper earrings uh, the the pattern isn't brilliant but to make use of the scraps I just thought I'd make these I shall get them all polished up and I shall see you in a sec hi guys we're back 
all polished and beautiful. Um, you can't really see the translucency. I'll try and capture it when I take some photos. But it looks really lovely. I'm really pleased with how they've turned out. Um, and I've not had to um, UV resin them because I've just got a really nice finish on. And there is a couple of little specks, but it actually makes it look more natural, I think. You can see that one there, I've just caught it in the light. Um, so they're the, the two main pieces and this is what I did with the scraps. So I basically made a bead, drilled quite a large hole through. Then I made uh, a little hole in the bottom and put um, a screw eye in. Put a screw eye in the top of the bead and if you're very careful you can open these eyes and then close them again. So I just made a little dangling pendant and I just did the same with these. I just put screw eyes in and I thought they needed a bit of something because I'd I didn't have any scraps left enough to make two small beads to match that uh, but they kind of um, fill in that gap don't they if you know what I mean so there we go guys just some simple ideas with a really simple stone effect uh, hope you enjoyed that and the guys that have asked me for it um, uh, you've got something out of it. Obviously, you can do whatever colours you want, guys. Um, and I might experiment using um, maybe a, a, a translucent clay with just some amber, because I think that would look really nice. Uh, but as I said, that you can't really see the translucency. But I'll try and capture it in some of the photos, so you'll have already seen that anyway. Hope you enjoyed that guys and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.